Welcome to the first Remix Conference. Uh, my name is Emily Kaufman. I'm super excited to be here today. Uh, I'm here from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and so excited to talk about what we're doing on the East Coast with Remix. So my talk is about the performance journey that my company, Harvey, uh, has undergone over the past year and how that ultimately led us to Remix. So, so what's Harvey? Harvey is a grocery delivery service where all of the products come from local farms and producers. Uh, it started out about a decade ago as a CSA program. Is anyone familiar with that? It's community supported agriculture. Basically, you pay some farm a yearly amount and then um, maybe weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, you get some box full of whatever they have in season. So it's a really great way to support local, um, support your local farmers and your producers. Um, yeah, and so up, up until about two and a half years ago, that's kind of all Harvey did, is we supported these CSA programs for farms. Um, we had a number of farms on the platform, and uh, we provided the way for customers to log in, make changes, add and remove things from their boxes, uh, just like a customizable CSA program. Um, and then something happened two years ago, you might remember the start of a pandemic, <laughs> and uh, we, so everything was closing, you know? Um, and so a lot of people in Pittsburgh who didn't want to go into the grocery store got on Harvey because they didn't want to, you know, go wait in line or, or be in a store with a bunch of people. And at the same time, all of these local producers who were used to setting up tents and farmers markets and tennis courts around the city, they didn't have a platform to sell anymore. And many of them got on Harvey in order to uh, stay in business. So all of this is to say is we had this massive influx of both producers and customers over the span of uh, the pandemic. So despite all that was going on with the world, Harvey began to grow from this small CSA program that had you know, a couple fruits and vegetables on it, on it into a full grocery service. So that's kind of the background. So of course, if you have any large-scale growth in a short amount of time, you might experience some growing pains, and we absolutely did. So in late 2020, I ran a lighthouse test on a simple content page on Harvey. There wasn't even a lot going on uh, on the page, and it's part of this big symphony app, and we got this score. Our bundle, the API the database lookups, even with a minimal UI to render, um, we had a baseline score in the 30s on most of our pages. So this, along with some constructive and uh, not so constructive customer feedback, led to a, a renewed investment in performance at Harvey. I don't know how far Pittsburgh News leaves Pittsburgh, <laughs> but if you've seen this, this happened a couple years ago, uh, I'll explain that. So the catalog page, which is where you go to uh, customize your box and just see what the farm is offering, um, had only a year prior been converted from a Symphony jQuery twig combo into a new page on our React single page application. And this page was hit the hardest. So the React, React had addressed several UX concerns that we had and it modernized our tech stack and, and our build, um, but it still felt short. So in true Pittsburgh fashion, the underlying page architecture just couldn't hold the weight. Um, it was taking upwards of tens of seconds in order to add something to your cart and remove something, yeah. Because um, we, we had, two years ago, we had maybe 30 to 40 products in our catalog page, and in about a span of a year, we had almost 500. So it was just, the page did not scale because it was, it was never meant to be bigger than a CSA that had a small number of products. Um, so our engineering team got together and said, what can we do in the short term to fix some of these issues? So we spent a few hours walking through each step of page load, Chrome DevTools open, um, and we organized what we saw into a few groups based on who would be working on it. So we had DevOps and networking, we had backend, which includes API and database, of course, and then we had frontend, otherwise known as my problem. Uh, 
And from there, we triage this into uh, quick and easy wins. What can we do now? Um, involved fixes. And this is going to be part of a future redesign. So for DevOps and networking, we, we really didn't have to do too much here just because most of this was handled by services and tooling. Um, but it was worth walking through and just making sure there weren't any unexpected bottlenecks. For backend, we, we had quite a few issues around images on the site. Um, so we have this, this hero banner that's on most, if not all, of our pages. And for some reason, it was taking like seven seconds to load and was kind of blocking first paint. So <laughs> uh, we did a ton of work around image optimization and caching that took seconds off of our page load time. So I can't speak to everything that my backend coworkers did, but uh, a few more involved fixes. Uh, we just updated endpoints and tried to avoid computationally expensive operations where we didn't actually need them. And some of the stuff we just hadn't assessed. I mean, some of the software is 10 years old. And uh, none of us have been there that long. So we're, <laughs> we're just going back through and saying, you know, why is this done this way? Does it still need to be done this way? Um, but all of this became a, came about because our team got together and we just opened the dev tools and we just walked through each step of everything that was happening and just, you know, asked ourselves how we could make it better. <laughs> Excuse me. So for the front end, um, there were many low-hanging fruit <laughs> that we were able to uh, start there. Um, for one, the bundle was just too big. So there was just so much code that a user had to download before even getting to interact with the page. And we use Webpack, so we were using the Analyzer plugin, if you're familiar with it, uh, just to identify problem areas. So I like this slide. Um, this immediately led us to <laughs> removing um, because it comes with a lot of like the internationalization um, you know, modules or parts of it. And we were only in the United States and Canada, and I think we have like one in Australia. So we took out a bunch that we don't need. And, you know. and we also made a plan to remove this going forward. But it was, it was this kind of stuff that we were able to find because we were looking through it together. So I also went through basically every dependency in our package.json and just said, why do we have this? Do we need it? Can we upgrade it for a performance increase? And I was able to remove a lot of, a lot of stuff. So I love and hate this slide, but <laughs> stresses me out a little bit. Uh, so one of the biggest problems we had on the front end was just the sheer number of elements on the page. Uh, so like I said, we maybe had 30 products before, uh, each with an image and a few buttons some text. And so even without all of these optimizations like two years ago, it was functional. I mean, you could go in and, and do what you needed to do. Um, so one easy thing we did was add lazy loading, which wasn't on there before. Uh, so in this screenshot, you can see this is the performance tab. We're basically trying to load 500 images on page load. So we did that, and uh, magically, the page stopped crashing. I'm going to save that one forever, probably. So I won't, I won't dive too deep into all of these, but um, better code, code splitting, um, just more thoughtful code splitting. So because of this, we, we kind of split out what the member would see versus what an admin would see and kind of started there. Because like I said, this was a massive Symfony application. Um, so, and then I built a components library that had a lot of stuff that they could share between the two of them. And that, that cut down on bundle size as well. Text compression. I'm, I'm probably going through these things, and you're like, yeah, of course you should be doing all of these. Well, we weren't, but we are now. <laughs> so um, yeah, we added this on all of our JavaScript and I, I believe our CSS, and that also just took seconds off of our page load. So this, one, this sometimes feels like a, a constant battle with marketing, because I realize that we need all of these things for metrics and um, just analytics in general. But you, know, you have to be mindful about how many are you adding you know, this was added six years ago. Is anyone, do, do we even have a login for this anymore? <laughs> so we went through all of that. If we didn't need it, we removed it. And uh, just all of these things that you should do, but we didn't really have a checklist of, you know, like when we were creating these things, what should we be doing? So minimizing expensive API calls. This was, uh, we were making a few on like a top level layout, some user data that we probably didn't need. So moving some of those from that layout level 
into a component so it's only loaded when you actually need it. I'm excited for some uh, remix nested routing stuff around there. So all of the changes that I mentioned so far made a substantial difference on page load. Um, at least it wasn't crashing anymore, people could use it again. Um, but it didn't really match our new business model that had come about because of the pandemic. We were no longer a CSA program. We were a full-fledged grocery service. You could get everything you need on there, which means we, we needed a redesign. So this is our, our new pages. These are our new pages here. This is the catalog. So one thing was instead of loading every single product, split it up by category. So you're just not having as many elements on the page anymore. We removed a bunch of the actual product card that was in the catalog. We made a new details page. Um, we generated images that actually matched how they would be viewed. So I think like we have thumbnails and a details view. We have the catalog view. And uh, we dropped some functionality that wasn't really giving us value anymore, like the ability to swap products and stuff like that. So I just this became very true for us as we were going through this because we started asking ourselves early on in the process, like for the performance hit that this might cause, like is this feature worth it? And um, a lot of it wasn't. It was like this is really slowing things down and there are alternatives to it that are, are much better. So like the ability to swap one product for another, you can just add a product and remove it. So it wasn't really, it wasn't really adding anything. So our product became more lean once we kind of adopted this assessment product for all of our new features. All right, let's see if this loads. So our redesign page is on the left and the existing page is on the right. And you can just see the side by side after all of our changes. That was on same connection, basically same everything, but a lot of work from our team. But it wasn't enough. I wanted to get rid of the spinners. And uh, our, our load time was obviously looking a lot better, at least our perceived load time. But our Lighthouse score was still really low. And you know, it's not everything, but it gives a lot of pointers for things you can work on. And, and we used a lot of them. So a little over a year ago, I bought myself a remix license as a birthday present to myself. <laughs> and I had used it for almost everything I built over the last year. And I was just testing stuff, and I realized that the co-location of the page load data requests with the component could solve some of our spinageddon issues, as the Remix team calls it. So if you remember that 32 from before, this is basically using all the same components, because I, I had that components library, basically the same code, mostly copied, it pasted into a Remix app, and it, I mean, just look at it, <laughs> speaks for itself. Um, which is super exciting. Um, let's see, I do have a video here. One of Remix's selling points is that it minimizes the request, re request waterfall, and that was absolutely the case for us. Um, so there are some places on our application where we're making these top level calls for some data, maybe something that the user needs to view it, and then once that is done, we make another request in the component, so you have a spinner, and then you have another spinner, and then you have another spinner as you know all of this is resolving. And um, this is our non-remix redesigned version of the catalog page. So you can see there's that initial wave of requests, and then there's that second wave, which you can see there when um, my use effects started firing. So here's that same waterfall pretty close to the same conditions. Um, it's a little skewed because on the non-remix version, we're making a lot more third-party requests, but you can still see that there's not that second wave of requests. And that was it. So our document is a little bit longer, but then you, you know, have everything happening there. So, and this is without taking advantage of a lot of the cool features like nested routing. This was kind of just like a, a demo to show my team about why we should be moving in this direction. So going forward, our plan is to continue to move pages into Remix, uh, into the application. And um, once we have enough that the app is usable on its own, we're just going to quietly shut off all that old <laughs> Symphony and SPA stuff and, and use this 
awesome new version with all the cool stuff you get out of Remix. So this has definitely been a almost two year performance journey for us. I've learned a ton. I realized I really like performance and I'm interested in doing more with it. And we just learned that you know, assessing performance when you're making new features is, is non-negotiable. Uh, has to be baked into everything we do, continuously checked for regression. Um, and our product list and our uh, farms, and you know, it's all growing at a, a really rapid pace. So since we've switched to Remix as kind of like a natural continuation of this performance journey, I feel pretty confident that what Remix looks like in two to five years, or uh, excuse me, what Harvey looks like in two to five years, like, I'm, I'm confident that it's gonna be fine and it'll scale and we're doing all the right things to get to that point. So I guess I ended a little early, but thank you everyone. If you have any questions about that or comments, feel free to reach out and uh, that's the blog article behind all of it. So thank you.